So it's me, just jar negative to positive. This is my documentary, yeah. This is where it all began for me, Pennant and Terrace, yeah. So I grew up in this house behind me. I don't want to get everybody's house on the camera and that. But I grew up in number 31 here. And bro, there's a lot of few stories about when I grew up here. But we lived at this house. Yeah. We used to access it from round the back. Yeah. We used to jump over next door's fence. Yeah. We used to come out. Yeah. Uncle Simon and Auntie Anita used to live at the back of us. Yeah, yeah, Simon and Anita. Yeah. yeah, and then your Auntie, your Auntie Dawn used to live down there. I think Jensen. she still lives there. And Jensen. Yeah. And we used to, it was just bit havoc on here every day. So have we got some more stories from round the back? We got some got a good story yeah, from round the back when you when I was supposed to be babysitting you. Yeah. Mum had gone out. Yeah. She said, left me with you. Yeah. And I took you on the backs of the middings. Yeah. And you yeah. fell off. And my mate caught you caught you from your from that head from your head boots in the floor. Yeah. Christopher Rubery were called. Right. He caught him by his foot. Right. And I was praying, thinking I'm gonna get killed when mum baby grasses me up, I'm gonna get killed. Well, what, what I remember, I remember growing up here, I just remember playing GTA one on PS1. I remember GTA one. And I just remember a little kid called Curtis lived on here. Remember, we had a little fight. Can't really remember too much, but yeah. So, next door to Dawn's, wasn't it, with the for sale sign? Yeah, That's yeah. That's where you smashed your mouth open. I smashed my mouth? You lost all your teeth there. I lost my front teeth? Yeah, there, right there. I remember losing my front teeth. I always thought it was on front nah, now. I it was here. It was there, right here. Was it? Yeah, because you had to run down and get you right there where that gate's open now, yeah. right there. Yeah. Right at that gate. Wow. It was always trouble here. We used to, we used to hack. This is, this is where we used to. This is where this is where the ends here. Yeah. It was in these snickets. The people that lived at this house used yeah. to think they used to call them bad names, and you would be bad to them. Wasn't he like he used to give us sweets, didn't he? No, 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 no. That was this house here. Was it? Yeah. yeah. I always thought it was a bit of a pedo. Yeah, that's why. That's why you weren't allowed near there. Right here. Yeah. We'll where my man stood there. Yeah. Yeah. That's where. That's the midden we was on there. Yeah. On that middings. Yeah. yeah. They used to be called middings back then. Yeah. Where my man stood there, you were sat on there, you were sat on the edge, and then yeah. you fell off. Obviously, that's high we were on it, you were on it. So I was, so say, so say, so say so this we, is a mid in here. Yeah, so we used to climb on these. Say this is a mid in. Yeah, so you're only about six or something, five, six. Yeah. You used to climb on them, jump across them, and obviously you sat on the top of there, and then yeah. you fall off head first, and then my man, Christopher Ruby, they caught you by, by your foot. They get me, so I've always been blessed. I fell off their head first, I was a little kid. How old were I, bro? Four? Four, five, six, somewhere like that. Four, five, six what, years old. What am I, eight years older than you, so? Yeah, I'd have been about 11, 12. Yes, yeah. I'd have been young, four. Yeah, he was little. Four or five. Fell off there, caught by my foot. I've been blessed from there. So basically, this is where I grew up. You know, a few stories there from my brother. Um, this is the beginning. So I'm yeah. going to take you through everything my whole life. But this is how it all started. So yeah, in that house, obviously, this is where my mum sold drugs. And uh, I remember my mum told me the story. I can't remember. I'm a young kid. But she said the social worker came. And um, I went to the letterbox saying there's no draw today. So my mum's obviously quickly opened the door. He's like, oh, no, no, he's got some new drawers. He's got some new drawers. So that's just a little story because growing up there, my mum was always having a wild party selling yeah, drugs right. or like, it was just like the, that was like the main house of the street. Like yeah. it was just active. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, but my bro has got a couple of stories as well, bro. What were you saying, bro? Yeah, we saw, uh, it used to be gold seal, red seal, green seal. And I used to, I used remember when it was gold seal. I used to take a little piece out of each bag because Mum used to sleep in, didn't she? Yeah. So I used to come down before school, take a little piece out of each bag, make my own self a tenner draw, and then I'd take that to school and sell it in splits. <laughs> yeah. So, so our life's always been a little always bit active. Been, man. Yeah. yeah, man. And then Mum got busted. She got bust. She got bust. Yeah. You lying? How? What? What happened? The block, the, the, the bus, did that's when she stopped grafting. She bust this house? Yeah. No way. Mum, mum got raided? Yeah, she got, mum and Jay, remember? Don't you remember? No way, don't raid anyway, man. My, my mum, we're going to get her in the dock. So, yeah, my mum, <laughs> fucking, she's taking the stand. So, yeah. So, this is Central Avenue. Yeah, I grew up here on Central Avenue. Um, well, me, Liam, Billy, Hilly, Shabba. This back street here, this back street over here, opposite. This is where we um we used to just be little bastards, in it? Like, we had the whole... We had the whole street here one time, blocked off with wheelie bins. We won't let no police in, no one passed. I'm only literally six years old. My mum's probably fucking thinking where I'm or probably just having a party. All right, so down this back street, we'd all sit here, yeah, and we'd all just fuck about. These used to be like middings. It's changed a little bit now, isn't it? This is like fucking, what, 20 fucking two years ago or something like that. So a long, long time, actually. And then we'd have um, anyone walk past here, they'd get robbed. Liam would say, yo. Kyle, Janiah, beat them up, rob them. We drop kids rollerblades and all. This is at young age, like literally six, seven. And that's all that really went on on here, Central. And yeah, but that's that's how it was just starting out. So already, mum's up there fucking partying, selling drugs. Everything's wild. I'm down here fucking robbing kids in the street. 
and yeah, shoplifting everything. And um, there's a garage on there, it's called ETC. I'd get him in, but he might get upset. I once kicked him in balls because I was a little shit. He's come at me, I kicked him in balls, he chased me all the way down the road and boot toe popped me up ass with his uh, fucking steel toe cops. So now I'm at 26 Lindley Road. This is the when I moved from Pennington, we moved down here. So, um, there were like a lot of young Asian kids in it. Obviously, I'm I look Asian in it, but I'm half Jamaican, quarter white, quarter Asian. But so all the lads were all right with me. A few of them had a lot of fights here, you know what I mean? Probably lost some, won some. It is what it is, isn't it? Um, same again, mum partying, uh, always, always active here. This is a little shop over there, Mr. Singh. Zoom over there. This one, Mr. Singh shop, yeah. And it was all right. We always used to chill out down that side there. There were some big guys out and about. So uh, I'm going to tell you a little situation that I can remember happening as we go towards this back street. So like I said, um, I used to chill out with my mate Kyle in it. And me and Kyle used to be still like running. Kyle's I know Kyle from Central all the way to here. Kyle just lived around the corner. But he's, he's black like me, mixed race. So we'd get in a few fights sometimes in it. I had a little fight with a, with a, I won't say his name, but we had a little thing here. He was beating me up, a little older than me. And uh, I remember I had something in my pocket. I tried sticking it in his head and he's got off me and then that was that done. And then we're going to come up this back street here. But we're all friends. We're like family around here. You know what I'm saying? Like back in the days, you know, all, all like aunties used to be out making japatis on back street and that. So this is the back exactly. street. Yeah. So I remember, um, obviously, I remember one guy, one guy on here called, uh, I don't want to mention people's names in it, but like he lived in a house down here. Yeah, I do remember him. And he got um he got beat up really bad. So when he's being beat up now, um he's running to our garden. So some guys have pulled on here with like long hair. I think it was like like some guys back in the days. I won't mention the names. I'm talking yeah, like yeah, twenty two, yeah. three years ago. Yeah, they've landed here on this back street. Come running into our he's running to our garden like to be safe, and um. My dad and my stepdad actually pulled him in, I think. They were getting battered, coshed up in his head, everything fucked up. I remember a crime scene came out. And that's it, really. You know, I started catching a few beats in his house, you know. Stuff like that. Same old, same old shit, really. But, bro, what stories do you remember from here? From here? I remember you having a fight with one of them over there. I can't remember his name. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Got, age, though, yeah, yeah. You've come in, fucking whatever. And then uh, Jay said to me, he said, listen, you better get out there and give him it. And I fucked him up in his garden there. Yeah. And he pulled the fucking Stanley blade out on me. Yeah. And I just remember, I, I, could, I just, I was giving him it, but I'm sure Jay got the knife out of his hand. And yeah. I was battered him, battered him bad. Yeah. And he used to just be always, we used to sit in the, the remember the, the, the car in the garden? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the, the, the Saab. Saab. The Saab, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretend we were driving about. <laughs> yeah. But all, all, all the lads, all the lads around here that I grew up with, all, all good lads, even to this yeah. day, I see him about now. All good lads, spot on. Seen a few of them in jail and stuff like that. And they're just like good people, man. It was good on here. Like, like these, these used to be different and that. And all mums and curries and yeah, everyone just, all, everyone everyone's just eating. Food, yeah. yeah, we're blessed around here, man. Yeah, it was well, nice, Lindley well. Road. And yeah, man, I hope everyone that's fucking still about is still all well and all good. You know what I'm saying? If you see this, man. Where the lamppost is, that's 20 rounds there, road. That's where I grew up, yeah. That was the third house after Pennington. So in this house, it was more like just bare drama going on. Mum's always drunk. Everything's worse now, innit, in my life, yeah? There was good times here as well, though, that I'm going to get into, you get me? But, like, um, there was... In this house, mum was drunk. Obviously, if you watch my podcast, you know about the beatings that I took. They all went down in the house, like, the more serious ones. I can remember I was always getting, like, force-fed, force-fed liver... Dirty shit that I didn't want to eat, man. Like, but force fed it. If I didn't eat it, I'm getting battered. You get me? Um, my mum's drunk. My mum's beating me. Remember them rollers? Them like fucking. Them like what kids wear to walk. Kids used to walk. Walkers. Mum battered me one of them ones because she got battered because I grassed her up for something. So she battered me. To my stepdad because she were getting me a beating. So I thought, well, you're getting me a beating. I'll get you a beating. Then I got two beatings, so it didn't work out, yeah. But furthermore, yeah. A lot of good times went on down here, you get me, like, um, I have my friend Kyle, you get me, still my boy to this day, you get me, we're more like, it's more like a different kind of relationship, you get to be on friendship now, you get me, like, I don't see him on for six months, the love's still the same, you get me, one of them types of relationships, yeah, but I grew up in the house and I remember my stepdad always used to be like, he must have been a burglar or a grafter or something, he used to be switching, bringing cars, changing number plates, bringing all the bags of stuff in, uh, PS, PS2s, I think at the time, maybe PS, PS1s, I don't know, but loads of stuff, you know, different, different stuff. Always changing plates, chucking plates right down in the back garden, and he was up to stuff in it. 
But I obviously, I'm, I must have realised that when I was growing up. Like, I, I, when I got older, I realised what it is now, isn't it? Ringing cars and all that. Um, and then, what else went on in that house? Like, not much good things, but on the outside of the house now, obviously around here, this is obviously around the road, and there's Ramsey Street here. Um, on Ramsey Street, I had a lot of good friends as well, like young, like young black kids, mixed race kids like myself. Um, there was a girl that lived in this house here. But I'm gonna get into all that anyway. But I just thought I'd give you the opening of this is basically the yard. I don't want to delve too much into the childhood because if you watch the podcast, you've heard all the bad things in it. So I'm gonna get into like the good times around you, regardless of what was going on at home. I'm gonna get into the good times. Um, as a kid, I got bullied a lot as well, you get me? So I'm going to get all that in, like, intakes from people that bullied me. And one thing you're going to realise is everyone, a lot of people that bullied me and did something that affected me, I got them back later on in life. And I've realised that looking back, like, I got a lot of people back from these young days. But I'm going to get into all that. Um, one one story that's on my mind from this house that's, that's kind of funny to me is when I lived in that house over there, I um, my mum, wherever she'd go, I'll go out. My stepdad would be doing whatever he's doing and I'd be at home alone sometimes, yeah. And I can remember I used to fucking put the music on. The um we always had a good system in it, like back in the days and that, you know, when I was like eight, nine, you know, them days where big system surround sound in the yard and that, like a lot of people I knew had that anyway. Then they'd all go out, yeah. And I'd open every window with like, do you ever see Matilda where she just starts doing all magical shit when she's alone, like she's getting fucked up by her parents and whatever bad bad upbringing. But when she's alone, it's like magical. So that's what it was like for me. So when I was alone, I'd open up all the windows, yeah, in the house, put this song on, yeah. Remember that song, man? I don't want no shy guy. I just want a shy guy. What I want, yeah. Mercy, mercy, mercy. You want me, want me, want me. You remember that one, did it? Full blast. And I'd hang my hands out the window, yeah. You can see the windows, like, there, like, big windows, it? So my arms would be hanging out. Remember when it ate? And I'd just be like that out the window, you get me? It's vibing. Till everyone got home and I probably got a beating for having music on loud, yeah? Because the neighbours were dickheads. Um, but yeah, this is Ramsey Street, Ramsdale Road, Ramsey Street. And um, just wait for cameraman to get here and I'll be taking you around, man. So, boom, I'm down here now. I'm on um, Ramsey Street where I grew up. Um, got my guy Romy grew up with me. So, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what went on around here. It's like a corner street, this. Yeah, so we had um, Beverly in it. Yeah, yeah. Beverly. Beverly. She's up with Shanique and Daniel. Shanique and Daniel. Yeah. I remember. My nigga beside the road used to live there. Yeah, yeah. My main nigga. Yeah, just me. And the main man named there. Yeah. He had number 30, Sam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Christopher's. Yeah, yeah, you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Courtney lived there family, as well. Family, that's family. Yeah, yeah like Gracie. Yeah. Okay, you remember that? 25. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Obviously, because it's my yard there, bro. Number 19. Still yeah, on that yeah, house. yeah, yeah. You was, bro, I'm sure you were this size when you was fucking 10. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, we, had D, we had Dean here as well, yeah, innit? Yeah, just me. Dean, his mum. Yeah. Man, he still lives there. He's probably there now, look out the window and walk past. Yeah. Like, what, what are you doing? That's what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm, like, I'm sure, I'm sure that Melanie lives at the bottom, man. Nah. I'm talking about sister Kirsty. At one point, when her mum and dad. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, Melanie lives there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, um, I remember Shanika and all these that used to fuck me up in it. So I was a little kid, I was about eight. I was a little shit. I'd be swearing at um, chucking stones at um, fucking, just being a horrible little kid, pull the hair or whatever. Yeah, he's a horrible little bastard, getting himself horrible. fucked up every day. Fucked beat. up, beat. That's so mad up, you're getting fucked up every day. Like, <laughs> every out, oh, man. That's yeah. it, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I enjoyed it though, because I never, I still come back out the next day, I'm still like, give him shit yeah, in it. Next, next hour? Next hour. <laughs> Next hour this is the fucking yeah. Shit. Well, a good street, this is like the best time growing up. We're like a family street. Everyone, yeah. family knew everybody's family, so it was, it was nice. Yeah. Literally. We were none of that burgling, we were nothing like yeah. none of that. No, no, no. No, no, bro. So, man, we're the oldest set of people ourselves, bro. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah, it's true. We were none of that. I grew up Just in that house, in the house over there. Like Still the same. The same coming off the, the, the walls, same paper off the walls, that, that, you know, the blue car. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, that was the, the house that I grew up in. 
And then um, there's on this uh, back street. Number 20, it? Number 20 yeah. bro. Yeah. It's got 20 on the wall, like it's, yeah. it's breathing. Mad machine on mm. it. Some beatings in that yard, bro. This this back street as well, fucking I've got yeah. lit. It's live, we had Dems on here. Me and my boy, um, who lived on here, like I used to chill with him mostly in it. I mean, we'd have, we had a, we had a game called Gone in 60 Seconds where um, I'd, we'd steal cars, so like the film, we still bear kids' cars and that, and put them all in my back garden over there. And we used to fly up and down here. But I want to tell you a funny story about a BMW, yeah. And it just reminded me now on Snap, yeah. So I had a BMW. I had a I had a, a orange. I had an orange leather seat and blue fucking um, a blue fucking what's it called, man? Uh, like 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 exterior kind of you know like paintwork. So boom. And I always got people back when I got older, but I was trying to get this quickly two funny stories. So the BMW was lit, I'd be flying up and down here, lit to the bottom, boom! Remember, we're young, we're small, so this is like, this was like miles long, yeah, this. Really you get me? So now... I know they died on that first street, Ming home. And I couldn't press my brakes on my pedal bike, bro. Yeah, it was like, it was like, every, remember. when you're little... I can't remember. Nah. I can't remember that. And nah. the lorry come and fucking save me. But the lorry come and break, like, so close, yeah. Everyone's come out on the next street, around the street, could slow down my bike, bro. About fucking seven, bro. It looks so like big, it was steep, in it. Winter time, car can't get up here. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like madness, and then boom. So, this kid called Raf from, from Lindley Road, he's come yeah, and stole my, stole my BMW, yeah. yeah <laughs> and um, fast forward fucking 15 years later, I end up getting that guy back. But that was my intention. Why? Because he stole, he bullied me and took my BMW, yeah. But another funny story about BMW, I went to Alphabet Zoo. Like 10 15 years later, and if you go on my old Facebook, yeah, Jinai BFD, you'll see the BMW. I took a picture of it and I met, I tagged my boy and I said, Look, bro, I found it. So there's kind of a little mad story there, but yeah, man, I had some fun around here, man. I remember I used to garden up here as well. I got caught, my foot got caught on a washing line. Did it look like this, buddy? Nah, it didn't, innit? Nah, it looked big, like it looks. Let me tell you why, because these walls weren't there, bro. Yeah, these walls and fences, they're probably coming like the last 10 years, these. Yeah, true. Just not yeah, true. Not even that. Six, seven years. And like mid tops like this, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two used to jump, two used to jump. Yeah. Mid top only. Bro, I jumped one once. I was hanging by my foot from the washing line, like upside down. Drop, chip my tooth, boom. Gone on crying. Ooh! Guess what? Beating, chip my tooth up bad. Yeah, just. <laughs> it's mad going up here. Like if you if you go home, like fucking, you cry or you've done something like hurt yourself. You get beat. Your school clothes, you're getting beat. Yeah. Trust me, even if you play out in your school clothes, obviously, yeah. you want a joke really. And it was like one of them areas where, because everybody knows each other, yeah. you couldn't really go on bad with each other like that because nah. you go back to your mum or your dad or yeah, whoever, yeah. your grandma. Peak on it really. Yeah, what kind of peak it was? It was good at the same time. It was good, bro. The flat, like, everyone like, yeah. were locked in. You, know? you don't get that no more, innit? Like, nah. on the back street, you'd have like Asian women out, like, you know, like. There was no racism, no, was there? Yeah, there was no race. Like, I didn't even understand the difference yeah, from we, black we and we white. Like, we was all just no, no. family, Everybody white people, black people. Like, like, and you don't get that these days. And in, 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 like, look at it now, like it's dead. Like, if you this was like years ago, you'd have like women out doing the washing and yeah, everything. Yeah. Just, you'd just be live, like, like fucking child. Like yeah. you think about it, can you? You can't hear one you. Nah, bro, like, there's no, like, everyone's in now on the iPads and shit. I'm fucking sad, bro. I used to go and make people get friends with and all the trees used to be like, to sit there. Yeah, I remember I used to go in the den with a girl there, man, and fucking mess about, like. Not even fuck, just rubbing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just rubbing. I didn't want to mention it, but yeah. <laughs> I won't say her name. But yeah, man, man. This was like the fucking perimeter that like we didn't really cross like Marshfield, that was more of an Asian community. But we had more like little beefs for them, little fights. Just kids in it, petty shit. We are mm. eight, nine, ten years old, there's nothing. They wanted to play like cricket on this back alley here. Yeah. They wanted to play football. You get me? So obviously when they got the crates there, they're falling. Yeah. They're playing football. Yeah. And their crates falling down, it's like a little beef thing. I've had a little couple of scraps down here for that. Yeah. I remember though, bro, you was a big kid and on, on, on this street over here, mm. this this other back alley over here we're gonna get to, yeah. So I once got tied to a lamppost in it. Uh, yeah, just... Reason why I want to mention this story is again, yeah, is because like I said as a kid, I, I probably did get bullied, but at the same time, we all loved each other, but at the same time, sometimes you deserved shit. it. I deserved it, yeah, because I'm a little shit. So I'm the cheeky. Used to do, man. Yeah, and these these guys were like 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 these guys were big. Like I was a little kid, these was like big. Like I don't know what you lot was eating, bro. Was eating good. But you were bigger than I was this back alley in it. There used yeah, to be yeah. a lamppost, man. It might have been that side then, I don't know. But anyway, I've been tied to it now. I'm sure it was barbed wire. 
But this guy that actually tied me to the lamppost, fast forward like fucking 20 years maybe fucking onwards, yeah? Actually got him back differently. But I'm gonna get into that like further down the line. But I wanna mention that, this such, cause I'm trying to get the point of my mindset was, anybody that hurt me, I've I always tried to get them back. And the majority of people I did get back, even from that young age, it was like stuck in my brain. But yeah, man, and this street now, um, fucking, not really, I don't remember much of me, what's the same. Yeah, I remember Hamid lived here. Hamid lived there. Oh, you came? Obviously, the guy who tied you to the lamppost. Still? Nah, I'll be fine. Yeah, he lived on here as well. He used to be lit down there, man. Yeah. Just like, even when we was young, young, like, we get loads of eggs or bricks standing in this corner there and just throw them on the main road. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, man. Just look. Respect and then I'll be your input yeah. to get me from the yeah, last one. So back in the days um when I told you on the podcast that I've come to school with a pen knife, it was like a corkscrew pen knife, um had all the different blades in it and that. It was this primary school. So I, I was getting bullied kind of by some kids. He's actually my good friend now. He was even in the casino when I won 60 grand. Fast forward um, and he reminded me of this story. So it's kind of crazy, do you know what I'm saying? But yeah, this was a school. And um, there's like bushes at the back of the playground, I don't know what it looks like now. Um, and I've come into the school, I've had the little pen knife, I didn't do much damage, I just started swinging it and swinging it. And then um, I remember I got expelled and my mum came into school, grabbed me and kicked me out, but I was in year three. So what I'm trying to get is, even from that young age of starting on Central Avenue, Back Street at six, now I'm in school taking knives in, only in year three. So yeah, that was just a mad story. And, so yeah, I'm here. I'm outside Kebab Branch. Well, this used to be Kebab Branch, yeah. So, so on this road, um, this is Belden. This is what you call Belden, yeah. And um, so this is obviously when I was 11. When I told you I moved from um, Ransdale Road, Ramsey Street, and all that, I moved up here. So everyone who I grew up with from down there, West Bowling, Ramsey Street, I kind of distanced from them. I didn't chill with them no more because obviously they went on their path, I went on my path, if that makes sense. So when I moved up here, I'm walking on here one day, obviously I'm, 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 I'm looking at around my own area thinking, obviously, um, checking out the area. And I remember I wanted to find a shop to get um, some sweets. So I walked in here um, on Belden to find the shop. <laughs> and then it bumped into a guy from primary school and he told me to have gone to the street called Wivens but before we got on there on here on Belden I started selling crack when I was 11 in it you see the this van is here in this car I remember seeing my first like smack head in it that's what we called him in it drug addict um, I remember seeing him and he was like a white guy yeah he was in an old purple vetra right I had to get in and serve him and I remember being proper scared because this guy obviously the rattling out there but I never knew what rattling was you get me so I jumped in the car and obviously I'm serving him I've done, done the transaction and yeah right so this is Dewitt Street, Belden Road so I'm coming in for my boy who's living there Taff very good mate of mine uh, why I'm mentioning Taff uh, because Taff were like uh, you know down here he was, he's older than me anyway Taff so but I used to chill with these lot you know like I'm saying maybe I don't think they bullied me too much you know maybe I'm a young kid in it so young kids you'll always get pushed forward and it's just it's just life peer pressure and all that yeah but they were cool realistically Taff were always cool with me but um, I'm telling his name because one day, like I said, I was a little shit, yeah? And my stepdad, my stepdad has come running up here to find me. I must have run away for a few days. He's come running up here to find me. He's chasing us all up this road here. So this is Belden Road, yeah? And what he's done is he's grabbed Taff. He's grabbed Taff and booted him up his ass. <laughs> I know Taff remembered that kick. <laughs> yeah, I were a little shit. And um, this is obviously when I first ever moved up here. I met Adi. I knew from school when I met him in the shop. I put him in the shop here to buy some suits. And I met AD and then from, from meeting AD in here, he's like, come on here. So when he says come on here, to come on to Wivens. And Wivens is where like I met all the boys, Mikey, Charlie, Ian, Little D. I already knew Little D, but all the other boys, I met P, I met him, I met them all, like all the boys. And that's when all the stuff that I was doing just leveled up and stepped up. But this area was kind of rough as well, Belden, Belden Road were kind of rough, man. So this shop here, this is Belden. I remember if Dev were there, we were going to have a word, but I remember this shop once got armed, robbed, and everyone were getting robbed around here. A violent, violent place, you know what I'm saying? 
pretty sick though, but there was another situation uh, Mum Belden when I were a kid. So we'd been in an house party, me, Mikey, the rat. I'm always gonna call him the rat in this documentary because that's what he is. Um, and and I'm gonna tell everybody why once I get to part two. Um, but this this is this were a wall. I don't know if that was a full wall. It might even have been that wall we was all leaning on. So there was an house party. And a kid, um, he were beat up, he were jumped, he got, he's got his head smashed into the TV. He got really badly beaten up and, you know, just young kids. But anyway, he had some older cousins and they jumped out on me here. Big guys, big tall, like six and a half foot guys, yeah. Jumped out on me and I was scared, I was intimidated and I was like, yo, what are you? But obviously Mikey were there and Mikey were there. I think Mikey were there when the guy got done in and Mikey, I think Mikey's backed it. Obviously I was a little skinny kid. He tried to like jump out on me. But these guys were from around this area, but fast forward, like 10 years or maybe even a bit longer. Yeah, it might have been like 10 years later. I got that guy back differently. And he'll never know that I got him back for that day. He probably won't even know. But like I'm saying, I held a lot of things in and I always got people back. And in part two of the documentary, when we go to the get backs and um, the wars and the beefs, like you're gonna know, I'm gonna tell you about all the get backs and stuff like that. But yeah, I got that guy back, so I thought I'd mention that. So this is a snicket where um, AD told me to walk through the first time I met up boys and women's. But there was a situation in here I remembered and um, with the older guys, like I said, there were some olders. And there was us, then there were some olders. Like, so we were kids and they were like 16, they were probably like 18 actually. And anyway, one day, Nath, one of, well, one of olders come through here and there's a guy, um, a junkie, and he must have done something through the snicket and, and just with one of the boys. And this day, my bro on a straight rampage, ended up going to jail at the end of this day, ended up getting about 100 busies got him pinned him down he went straight to prison but in a snicket it was a guy walking through a junkie um i think he's dead now man god rest his soul anyway but he got he, uh, my boys battered him with this rope a piece of rope like proper battered him with a piece of rope for what he did through the snicket man and it was just mad like but he was savage and i always seen my bro be savage you know in situations and i was a kid so imagine i'm just a little kid about i must have been 11 12 and i'm watching this and I was already a savage, but because I was exposed to this violence, what I'm seeing from the olders, it were like it built more savageness into me. It's like I did everything they did when I got bigger with 10 times more effort. Do you know what I'm saying? But yeah, it was, it was just a situation I thought I'd mention. So yo, this is women. So imagine yeah, we've walked through here. Yeah? We've come onto the street now, yeah? So we've come onto the street. There's about 100 kids here, all in the corner of that wall, yeah? And this is what first time I've walked on with AD and Mikey yeah, and I loved it and then I met all the boys and I just love chilling with all the boys and, and all and all the girls and we had a caravan in there like down that passage bit there we had a caravan and I remember I lost my virginity in there yeah I remember I took a girl and uh, it took me about an hour to get it in and literally I've been crying all over ages yeah but when I did she said it was best ever yeah so anyway so just little things like that we had caravans parked up and then um Obviously, like this is as young kids, so this is as like proper young kids I'm talking about now. And then we'd all chill on here. This is obviously the street here. They come up here. This is the full street, yeah. So you had all the boys all lived on here, yeah. So you had you had you had pubs up here, you had Danny here. Danny, my best friend, my brother, he's he passed away, God rest his soul, yeah. And um, you had Mike up at the top. Yeah, and you had Charlie, you had Mikey, you had Charlie. Um, you had Ian, Ian in the corner, uh, he, obviously me too, but he came later on. Uh, we had a few girls that lived in here, uh, Jennifer, Jordy, all of that, yeah, like all the gang, yeah. Um, we had some, we had some um, uh, junkies that lived in there, number 19, I think it was, they were called, uh, she was called um, uh, Wendy, Junkie Wendy. I remember one of my mates ended up smashing a boyfriend in a fight. I think his name was Junkie Sai, Junkie Simon. Obviously, that's what we called the minute, you know, we were kids. And that's what they were, yeah. Then we'd all chill under here, yeah. So this is the, um, this we used to call this here, this, this here, this number two. We used to call this the shelter, yeah. So we'd all sit under here, under the shelter, chilling. Um, just being, drinking MD 2020, being little shits and just messing about. As young kids, you know, um, We'd be twacking cars, we had twat cars, we used to go to Dodgy Rogers, get cars. We had houses down the road, uh, back down there, uh, big batteries. I think I went to jail just about them times, but we had, I remember seeing her about before I went to jail. We're chilling there, 
um we was like a proper firm on here you know everybody you could sleep at anybody's house I, like i said i was always a runaway kid never really learned to stay at home so i'd always stay at peas i was always welcome at peas and then i, I stay at mikey's all the time as well um and then we just like we just get up to normal things and we were like a firm so during like green street the film you've seen the film green street and all that football like we we were kind of thought we were kind of like them as young kids like we'd go to whipsy we'd fight all the guys in whipsy We'd go to bank foot, but bank foot guys were my mates. Even whoopsie lads were my mates. You know, it wasn't no proper gang beast, but we'd all, at some point, had fights with different areas. And I'm not not like being big headed, but women's like back then we were the strongest team, bro. Like we, the, even even big men were getting knocked out. Like Mikey, one of the lads, he were like an hard kid, bro. We were 14, knocking out 33 year old men for fun. You go down at pub at bottom at road, south south of lane, knocked out a few men down there. A lot of other guys tried it with Mikey and they know they are and they got put out. Mikey were an animal. Mikey was that much of an animal. If I ever got in any other trouble, I had his number on speed dial. His number, I even remember it. It was 0777-853-1254, yeah. I had it on speed dial. I remember it now to this day. And I'm talking this is years ago, like 12, 13 years old. Mikey had landed and just smack man up. Then he had a cousin called Charlie. Charlie's an hard little bugger as well. Charlie knocked a few people out with me and for me. I remember one situation, me and Charlie got in on Whipsy, yeah. Uh, top of uh, St Enoch's and we've got all the, uh, I think it was Smith Ave firm in front of us, yeah? And they're all there and, and I, I think so, so much that like Mikey's had a fight or someone's had a fight and everybody's run off and Charlie stood there like, fucking come on! Charlie going, imagine that, the only one person stood outside of Charlie and that was me, little skinny, seven, seven stone wet through, like, come on! You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, we used to get cracking, man, like we've had loads of fights with Queenie lads back in the days outside Hudson pub then it wasn't just us down here like there were lads from from Queenie and lads from uh, everywhere used to come in here lads from Bank Fort like we, were, we had like a proper big firm it were proper good like and you know is if I, I I went to jail or didn't I so I went to jail when I was 14 so when I went to jail and I come out it's like everyone started the world it was everyone, everyone changes and people move on with their life but if our team stayed strong like we'd probably all be multi-millionaires and have a proper sick life now but you know, it's as you get older and drugs get involved and everyone goes in the wrong way, people have kids, it all changes, doesn't it? But yeah, that, that was life on the street. It was a proper good family street. We'd have barbecues, you know, people would be out partying on the street. We'd be taking, you know, people would be taking drugs. We'd be doing what we're doing, man. We'd be living life. Um, now I'm gonna fast forward for, for you a little bit. So now I'm fast forwarding, I'm a little bit older now. And like I'm saying, we started selling drugs. Um, started running around for people well well I did um, so now I'm selling drugs and there's a what I've been to jail I've come out of jail um, and then I've started selling drugs for someone right so like I'm saying fast forward I started selling drugs um, for other people and uh, this is the guy ended up beating up but I ended up working for a mean little Danny uh, like I'm saying, we'd cut items in half so we'd make more money because we're ripping off. So we're getting about, we're making about hundred pound a day each, but they was only paying us like 40, 50 quid. So we'd cut them in half. But I was a, such a sick grafter, yeah. I'm not proud of it, but I was the sickest guy. I'd be up at nine o'clock. I was money hungry. I wanted the money. I'd be sat on this wall right here, this wall, right there, every morning at nine o'clock, yeah. And all the junkies, they'd all come walking up here from Canterbury. They'd all come walking up here, and I just whack. Head after head after head, just pussing heads, pussing heads, pussing heads, all day, and then I probably switch and move them up to move them up to uh, Millennium because it get a bit hot here. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and that was it. Like that was the life. It just progressed from being kids, talking cars, drinking MD, fucking about. Then I went to prison, come out, started selling drugs, and then that was that. And then I fast forward a little bit more as I got a bit older. I'm, I'm getting into this peak of you know firearms and stuff like that and, and alleged alleged you know what i'm saying none of this is proven it's all alleged police intelligence and all that yeah um, i have to be careful what i say you know what i'm saying but anyway so there was a guy and he lived over here this year his blue jeep is and I, I i don't care really so because i have no respect for people that that like move bulky you know what i'm saying and what happened is so now fast forward i'm a bit bigger now and um, like i'm saying you know things were progressing right and you know people were coming up here and they were getting beat up and every, like on the earth nobody ever come up here and did anything you know a couple of one-on-one -on -one fight situations right then a couple of them people had become our good friends but what i'm saying is like no one ever come up here and did anything never 
Yeah, maybe a certain man has been in prison and people might have come up and you know what I'm saying? But no one ever came up here and no one could ever do nothing to the team, you know what I'm saying? Like we were strong is what I'm saying, right? Alright, so fast forward now, so there was a guy that lived on here, right? And uh, he came to us on the block because a couple of his things were going missing, he used to throw a beat that were going missing. He came to a couple of guys on the block, right? Um, I know this story because I live here and I know what happened, you know what I'm saying? So these guys that robbed this guy's thing, they got one of them, one guy got badly beaten up with a shotgun basically, yeah? He got badly beaten up, you know, rumours I heard that when they were getting beat up with a shotgun, the shotgun were falling apart and, and whoever were beating him up with the shotgun, they had to put it back together and then continue beating him up with the shotgun, like... So that, that effort got put in for that guy by some people, but then that guy started doing a little bit of rap manoeuvres and then um, there was a robbery that I spoke about in my podcast where a guy got put on a tracker and some boxes of wood got nicked. So what happened is um, I slapped the tracker on. Boom, we watched the tracker. We half knew the, 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 the bud were coming because we obviously we half knew the guy, you know what I'm saying? So but we wanted to see every single place he were going and he were growing and what he were doing, you know what I'm saying? So then... Um, we did do that anyway, but anyway, the bud arrived. We've seen that on the track, and we arrived. I said, Yeah, yeah, I was going to grab the bud and that. So I went in and grabbed the bud about five, six boxes. Yeah, I can't remember exactly. And then um, that was it. He got done in it before his little snake maneuvers. And then obviously, uh, my boy's locks got shot off his doors. But I'll get into that in part two. But I believe it could have been something to do with that guy, like a, as a comeback, or maybe not. Because when you've got so much beef going on and so much stuff going on, you don't know where it's coming from. And yeah, that's what we're going on. So as we got bigger, obviously the crimes got bigger. You know, we had fast cars, S3s, RS4s. We had Golf, uh, what are them, R32s, GTIs. Like we had all the fast cars like parked up ready. So this now, yeah, is a green box. It's a green box here, yeah. So basically, well, one day, we sat in that green box, we used to keep some, you know, use your imagination, yeah. And we had beef with some guys that were big in the game, yeah. They thought they were big in the game. To us, we didn't care, we didn't fear no one in it. So we were gonna, um, we had it there in the, in the side of there, and obviously you could see the full road in it. And you could see the full road. I, I used to stay there and I used to stay there and I'd be like, look, if they come up here, you know, it is. The tools are getting used in it. But no one ever came up and uh, that's how it progressed, you know, like that's how it kind of started out. Like we started, people just started getting it and then from there it's progressed but I'm gonna get into all the wars, the beefs and the get backs in part two. So part two is gonna be six. So make sure you watch part two because this is just the beginning. And part two, all these people that I've mentioned that I've got back, all these alleged shootings I've been arrested for. Anything that I've been arrested for and I can speak about it, you know, that's alleged and an alleged defense and I can speak about it. I'm gonna speak about it. I'm gonna take you to areas like Ormwood. I'm gonna take you to areas like Fagley. I'm gonna take you to areas like uh, Pilot. Every area where I've put some work in and done something, I'm gonna take you there. And it's not about showing off or all. It's just about getting a story out there. So you young kids know I'm really about it. I really lived it. I really allegedly did some of these things. And um, yeah. Now we're gonna head up to Buttershaw. I'm gonna show you a robbery that I did up there. And then after that, we're going to go up to Queensbury and I'm going to show you the robbery that I got two and a half years and then going to prison for. I jacked him, kid. Um, I didn't jack him here. I jacked him um, just near his house, just after school. And then he's obviously his dad's found out. And one day, his dad's taxi driver has come from down this road. So his dad's running down here now with a big nine inch knife, big blade, yeah? So, imagine he's running down there. I can't see that part though, yeah? So I'm here. I'm here. I used to stand here waiting for school to come out, so school's changed now, it's all been refurbished since when I was there back in the day, yeah. Um, I was there for like, I did six weeks, um, got expelled, but yeah, anyway. So I'm here waiting for all the kids to come out, probably try jack someone. We're on his pedal bikes and my mate Leon stood here, I think it was Leon, and Leon's obviously seen this guy running down with this knife, He's got, and I'm, I'm to be facing, I obviously couldn't see him, so Leon's going, yo, Ja, he's obviously, or yo, Janaya. Boom, he's seen him coming for me in it, so then I've got off through the park. So then the guy the guy's crazy dad's done, he drove into the park. He, I don't even know if you can still drive, but he's dropped into the park. So we're getting off here now on his pedal bike, he's trying to stab me here. Coming to the parking, he was a town taxi driver. He's chasing me in his car, yo, I've got off man. 
And then um, my brother used to roll with some guys back in the days, back in like 06 or 07, and, and they were, they were, you know, they were kind of robbers. They robbed a lot of people and they did a lot of bad things. And one of them turned QE and all that. But he used to roll with them, and I told them because you know they were like my sort of people, my brother's people. I told them they were looking for the guy. Long story short, though, I don't know what happened with that. But I told my stepdad. My stepdad landed the guy's house. He brought us in for food, and we had to like sit down. But I ended up getting a two-year order for that. Anyway, got a two-year order for that, and obviously I did the robbery up at Dean Stones, and then um, that's when I went to prison. I went to prison for the first time. So yeah, that was just life, you know. It's just a little shit. This is Dean Stones going to be spinning the camera that way, but it's a garage, yeah. But you know, like back in 2000, and, back in 2007, yeah, this was like a like back where kids used to used to chill out in it and um, so we've come up this road here yeah this is Dean Stone's lane we've come through we've come through Buttershaw yeah we've come through the country lanes and there was a group of kids where this used to be a garage and um, we've had a gas gun which was an intimidation firearm they called it in court and we had um, a samurai sword so we've come through me um, a guy was a snake that used to chill over his house yeah in the country because he's a rat um, and my boy Pops, and uh, what we've done is, we've jumped out, um, we were just kids, you know, we didn't really know what we were doing, I was 14, he probably was about 15, 16, we jumped out, we were brought some kids, and we were put them under the shelter, it didn't used to be a shelter where you just showed you on camera, we approached them, um, I had the, the samurai and he had the gas gun, so I've stuck the samurai um, to one of them, tried jacking them up, taking the stuff, uh, we ended up getting him a two six and a fiver, yeah. I remember Pete took the knife off because you know I was getting a bit vicious with it, yeah. Um, but anyway, we ended up taking two six and a fiver. Long story short, I've a whole heap of other charges. Um, I'm going to show you in the next scene the other robbery on charges for. I ended up going to jail for two and a half years. Yeah, and that's why I went to jail because of the crime I committed here on Dean Stones Lane. Uh, my first ever like jail offence that I went to jail for. This is Great Autumn Road um, this is where when I told you what, when I was a kid there was a guy and um, I used to work for him, he was a drug dealer and he used to bully me kind of thing like I, I, got, I basically I ended up um, robbing the money, the money went missing so they started putting my mum under pressure and um, I ended up going to jail for a month because I was scared and I think I need to get away because these guys were intimidating to me but you know that was then I ended up going to Marshgate, I come out when I was like 18, fast forward and I was on this road here now for real great on road. And uh, I'm driving up this road, I'm with my boy Mitchell, yeah. So we come, we come up this road in gridlock traffic, so it's kind of like standstillish. And uh, the guy that I've um, robbed, he's approached the car, he's seen me in the traffic, he's approached the car and he's, he's and I don't know what he's doing, banging the window or whatever. Mitchell said, jump out and bang him in it. So I've just jumped out of the car, I'm fresh out of jail, 18. I've been walking up, so imagine this is the road. My man's here in front of me, I just walked up to him, banged him, sat him on his arse, yeah? He didn't want no more after that, but all his boys were stood over here in their cellars, yeah? So they've all like tried running over, yeah? I tried swerving them, they ended up getting into it, getting into the room with about five of them now. So they're all on me and that, but I'll be honest with you, not what happening, I was just giving them it, yeah? And then I think the police came down, so they've all just like one's run down there, one's, like, one's running down here now, down there past the SOs, yeah. So he's running down there past the SOs, and I'm chasing him, chasing him. But obviously, Mitchell's there in the traffic, like, yo, yo, jump in, jump in. And I've jumped in the car, and uh, we got off. But yeah, I got him back, and do you know what? It's not even about getting him back, it's about, you know, that guy was putting my mum under stress, and putting my mum in fear. You know, even had me in fear at some points. But then you know what happens, you grow big and you realise that these guys, yeah, there's nothing to him. There's nothing to him and he's a good guy now, I see him, I say hello to him, I wave at him and everything like that. Like it's not it's not like that, it's not an issue. But that was the, the situation back then and always know as a young kid if that's going on and that like just stick up for yourself man because nine times out of ten, these guys that I've got little kids working for him are pussies. Alright, so I'm outside Miss Penny's, yeah. So one day now one day I went into Miss Penny's to buy my mum a padlock, yeah. And there was an Asian kid and he accused me of burgling his house. Um, oh, I said I tried to burgle his house. And um, he's coming like, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to come to your mum's house and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you know how they're doing it. So I said, all right, no problem. I said, my mate Tondi was here. I said, Tondi keeping me here for one minute. Yeah. So I've run down home and I've had something put down, right? 
and I couldn't find it. So then I've told my missus to hurry up and run up. She's passed me it. I've run back up here in his mate's here and I'll put it to him. He's got on his knees, but this was red hot sunny day, yeah? So it's red hot, the traffic's gridlock in it. So imagine the traffic's gridlock. I've got a vest on, it's red hot. He's on his knees here, like proper on his knees, yeah? I've got the thing to him. Yeah, he's on his knees. And he's like, it's not me, it's not me. And he's pointing to his mate. And his mate's running it there, yeah. But on there, my mate's coming on in the narrowest far, yeah. My mate Smiley is coming on. And when he's coming on, he's seen that I'm police. So when he's seen that I'm police and I'm running up here to, to, to get my man, he's like, no, no, just please, just please. And then I took the right there, the bookie. The bookie there, I took the right. And then obviously, um, my boy's grabbed me, I've jumped in his car and we've got off. Right, so there's been a situation. Um, I'm pulling out of a car one. The guy's doing my movement, it's Beckside Road. Or I don't know if you've been on Beckside Road or you know where I'm on about. Probably not. People from everywhere watch this. But anyway, there's a car wash and it's a line of traffic. But if you want to get around the traffic, you go down the other side. So I've been coming out and I've hit this car. But I thought it was my fault initially. So I'm like, yeah, bro, I'll pay you in it. It's my fault. But then I've realised he's doing a manoeuvre. So he's rung me up like, oh, you need to pay this money and that. Like, he must have thought I'm an idiot or I'm going to be scared or whatever, yeah. So that same day, I remember I bought a knife set, Swiss made. Um, so I'm at home and he's rung me and I said, no worries, I'll come and see you. But I know what a lot, some Asian guys are like. I'm not saying everyone, I've got a lot of Asian mates. I'm just saying some. So I knew more than likely he's not going to be alone. So I put the big knife down my top, yeah. Um, and I've come to the situation. I parked my car over there on that street, yeah. Parked my car there. And now imagine yeah, I'm, I'm stood here, yeah? I'm stood on this side of the fence, yeah? There's three guys in front of me here on this side of the railings and they're talking and I'm like, um, stop me, you're not getting a I've come to this side because I can see them all surrounding me so I need to get myself a little bit of, you know, a bit of edge in this situation. So now, now, like, literally as I'm talking, there's car after car after car pulling up. And what's happened is, um, there's more lads and more lads in it. So then one of us pulled out a little stick knife about this big, yeah? So I said to him, is that what time it is, yeah? I pulled out the big knife. Remember, I've got like 30 lads in front of me now. 25, 30, yeah, man, that's it. I'm swinging the knife, boom, boom. They're all running, it's crazy, it's crazy. And then after that, like, it's calmed down a bit because I knew a few of the lads. And then we had a little chat and it got squashed. We got, we got put to bed, but there was a situation where I wasn't asked, you know what I'm saying? like. I walked into 30 lads on my own and then after all that happened, my boy was on his way and he landed with a big machete, but he missed it all. He just got, he just missed it, but he still went sick when he landed. But the point is, them situations that we're going into on my own, there's been a lot more situations where a lot of people have got lucky and I've got lucky. Uh, not only about these same people, but just in this area in general. So there was a situation here outside the shop, yeah? Um, there's these shops here. There was a situation basically what, what, what's happened is the guy in the shop um, had a bit of beef with one of my friends yeah so we're driving on he started he aggressed the situation so we got out of the car this guy was about six seven foot tall yeah i'm not exaggerating yeah people know i'm on about the shops right here yeah my mum's come out of the shop and there's a few of them so i just banged him because this guy's so big so i was giving it yeah so when i beat him up he didn't like it and they've come out with machete so we've gone we've got in a jeep we've come back i've drove the jeep into the shop I'm gonna edit that video out into this clip, it's a sick video, yeah? I drove the Jeep into the shop, yeah? And then obviously, um, that guy, because the police didn't like us, they brought him to court as a witness, and he got he got me jailed. You know, he got me a suspended sentence, and he got my mate a 10 month prison sentence. And um, the guy was still going on bad all the time, but I thought, how can you go on bad, bro, when you got us all basically prison sentence? He got my mate 10 months, he got me a 10 month suspended. And yeah, and that's how the police were going on though. So imagine he aggressed it. There's his own camera running out with machete is free for him. Machete has been the aggressor. And we got done for it. Imagine that. So realistically, it was kind of like self-defense in a way. But we got done because I'm sure on that level of you cause all the trouble, you're involved in firearm defenses. I'm gonna get into all that in part two. This is just part one of the, of the like, you know. But when part two comes, you'll know about all the firearm stuff. But what I'm saying is, when you're involved in that, the police, they don't care about you're you're the you're never the victim is what I'm trying to say you're always the, the problem in any situation so yeah so that was part one of the documentary i hope you all enjoyed it we're going to be doing part two the robberies the wars the beasts the get backs 
I'm gonna take you back to the scenes. I'm gonna take you to areas that alleged shootings happen. People got dragged out of their houses. People ran out of takeaways and locked themselves in them and all kinds of madness. Like I'm gonna propagate into it in a part two. But I hope you enjoy part one, product of my environment, and stay tuned for part two. You know what it is, just ya, stay blessed. Do that better than anybody. I, I, bet, I bet you got it twisted, you don't know who to trust. So many player hating niggas trying to sound like us. Say they ready for the funk, but I don't think they know it. Straight to the depths of hell is where those cows going. Well, all you still down, nigga, holler when you see me. And let the devil Cash and things are five double O, being smoking flashy.